ain't testing, you're guessing. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Good morning, it's me, Mikey Pipes. And we have a great and exciting day lined up today. But first, let me show you a couple gifts I got yesterday. For starters, compliments of Greenberg Supply. Miss April 2021, beautiful, beautiful calendar. I felt, com I don't know, obligated to also Utilize the other calendar they gave us and show off May 2021. Not only did they send us two great, amazing calendars, I got this cool telescoping pocket lighter. So I guess you put a match on there and you stick that in the hole to light the pilot. He also sent me hot block, which we're going to use today. And to compare, Peter Smart, a.k.a. Godzilla Sugar Daddy, Set me wet rag. So we're going to try both of these out today. When I use my brand new brazing tip, this is the rosebud, as you can see. And this does up to inch and a half OD copper. So we're going to use this today. And we're going to try out the hot block and the wet rag in this Bosch IDS 2.0 that is already loaded up in the truck. There she is. There's the condensing unit, and behind that Goliath pad is the air handler. Two-ton system, and we're not gonna forget, we're gonna use the vacuum pump by Elitech, the SVP7. Stay tuned, guys, it's gonna be a great day. The air handler, unfortunately, is in a very, very tight attic, but we'll make it happen, like we always do. Stay tuned. All right, let's see. If my masonry guy, Gustavo, did the right thing for me. Let's see. Oh, yes, he did. Look at that. Perfect. I'm gonna throw some cardboard here. We don't wanna track mud, but the problem here was we have too tight of a spot here. Look at this. This is the basement. That's the living room. That's the second floor, and this is the master bedroom. And I, I told my clients, hey, listen, you know what? If we're going to start, you know, replacing systems, I'm going to make sure we have a good foundation in place. That way we avoid issues with airflow. So I had my masonry guy pull out that bush that was there and extend the platform. That way I could take the new master bedroom unit and put it there and get some more separation here. And then the game plan moving forward is that one by one, he's got a total of five systems here. One by one, we're gonna start swapping them out with Bosch IDS 2.0 systems and uh, get everything um, you know, the way it should be because you can't even, this is not right, come on. Like literally, there's my hand. <laughs> if you guys remember, this is the house where they have the, the host spigot in the electrical closet. I'm gonna put uh, shut off the irrigation line right there and take out that, that plug and we'll use that hose faucet moving forward. All right, let's take a look inside. All right. This is what I'm working with, guys. <laughs> Some parts of the attic have plywood. Most don't. And maybe the same installer who did that other job, those trains, also did this one. Because there's my blower compartment, and there's my evaporator coil, here's my roof rafters. Yes, technically we can access this, technically. But be mindful of the service guy who's gonna come in after the installer you know, to service it in the future. So there's my two-ton rude air handler. She's currently on 110 volts. We have to upgrade that to 240. 
My electrician will be here a little bit later. It's about 8.30 in the morning. I got my supply plant disconnected and resting over there. I have my hydronic heating coil, fan coil over there, resting off to the side, hooked up with Peck, so she's forgiving. And Steven's outside recovering the refrigerant. Let's go say hi to Steven. Hey, Pat, my panel is right down there. See it? I'm in the attic and the unit is right over there. So we have about, I wanna say maybe 30 feet to the unit. So at most 50 feet to run 240 volts from the Murray panel, which is right down there. All right, here are the two panels. There's the attic. And I think that line is being shared with something else, so we can't convert it, the line, to 240 volts. So it's gonna run a new line to sending this video to my electrician. He'll be here in a little bit. All right, let's go check out Godzilla. All right, let's see what he got done. All right. We have the recovery machine running. Set to recover. Wow, almost empty. We didn't take the Schrader cores out, but that's okay. Just got that open. The only thing I would have liked to have seen was uh, this on a scale. Other than that, great job. Excellent. Look at that, guys. He's learning. I'm gonna have to do something with that kink right there. Let's get, we're all gonna get caught out anyway because we're moving the air hand, I mean the condenser over onto this pad. How do you think you did? You, you did it perfectly. Perfectly, and it's already recovered. Look at that. It's already recovered. The only constructive criticism is maybe use a scale next time. That way you know how much you're taking out. Other than that, perfect. All right, we got the Bosch. This is the three ton heat pump condensing unit. We're sizing that up with the two ton air handler. That's the way it works with Bosch. All right, this thing does it all automatically. We're gonna take this, con uh, this condenser over there, set it on the platform. We're gonna use the cardboard to cover up all the mud that's over there. And then waiting for Mike to come, but we're gonna take apart the air handler and get that up into the attic. You ready, Zilla? Let's get it. All right. There she is. There's our new extension on the pad. Isn't she beautiful? What you think, Godzilla? She's beautiful. I love Bosch. I love Bosch. I love them. They're sexy. This is the old condenser for the master bedroom, which is coming out. So then we'll have this one, that one, that one, and that one. And eventually over time, there'll be more spaced. And yes, there's still perfect, technically not enough clearance, even if I manipulate these all around, but it's better than it was, than it was before, seriously. And again, I have a generator on one side and a fence on the other. It is what it is. All right. So, there's one thing that works out in our favor here. So, the old one, I think, was installed by the same guys who put those trains in yesterday. <laughs> right? It kind of so, makes sense. So, this side does not go towards the wall. We're not going to put this side towards, like, the roof rafters like this. Exactly. Correct. Okay. And maybe, just maybe, they installed that system up there maybe because it wasn't interchangeable with the position of the the which way is out uh -huh. the discharge so if this is our supply side and that is our return yeah. and there is our drain on the bottom so when it's laying horizontally right instead of being behind this thing we'll be in front of it wow. isn't that nice yeah. That's so nice. It's a nice, it's nice, right? And the hard part is now is getting this bitch 
up in that attic. Uh, did you show them what it looked like in there? Uh, sorry, I got interrupted. That was the other mic. <laughs> I gave him a sneak peek of the attic. Yeah, that attic is no joke, man. Uh, leave the short one here. Okay. The long one will um, use on the side of the house because I need to extend the line set That's at the air handler. Mm -hmm. So that's the hard part, getting this thing inside the attic. We got it, though. I'm going to start by taking my tubing cutter, compliments of Peter Smart, which is right here. Look at that. Brand new. And I'm going to cut the line set. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to cut the line set on the air handler. All right, let's go. Let's go get it. All right. Let me show you what I'm working with, guys. Oh, attacked by wires already. And we can go through here. Ah, God help me. Could always be worse. Could always be worse. And there she is, right there. So we have a little bit of room here. I don't want to disturb this return. And we'll get over or under this flex and uh, get get it. Let's get it done. Mikey Pipes commands thee. Commands it himself. Uh, get it done. All right, let me go cut those line sets. We need to feed the people, Godzilla. Show them how nuts we are. Grab that end, almighty Godzilla. Hold on. Watch your feet. Watch that surfboard. Watch the wires. You know what? I got to turn our ankle. Are we locked in right now? Are we locked in? Be careful. Oh, I feel good. Oh, wait, hold on. Whoa. Uh, okay. uh. Oh, wire my own here. Oh, fucking wire. Uh. 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 Slide down. Yep, I got this side. Door frame, okay. And the only thing that we didn't do was a drop cloth right there. Yeah, the YouTube police are gonna get me for that. They're gonna get me. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Great. See, and that was the hardest part of the job, wasn't it? Or well, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but you were worried about today. You were not. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Too big for you me. were like, oh, fuck, this attic. All right, let's go get rid of this bitch. All right, let's just quickly compare. Um, I know this one is upside down. It's a rude. It can handle it. I think I should maybe take the badge off and send it to that guy who collects them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, make a donation to the, the postage fund. We'll send that to you. Um, as far as when they're laying down horizontally, the Bosch is a little bit taller. All right. 
and a little bit um, width, I guess, is taller, standing up. Other than that, this uses 240 volts. This uses 110. And yeah, we're good. I think we're good. We'll make it happen. All right. It's about 9.15 in the morning. There's the new air handler. Yeah, I know. You're going to comment about that. But I uh, extended my line set. And... You know what? I think we all learn from each other. I really do believe in that. Because in last Friday's video, when I'm using the abrasing rig, I was not using uh, the rosebud tip. And let me tell you something. This thing, I don't know why it took me so many years to discover this thing. So, guys, I really appreciate the tip for the rosebud tip on my brazing rig because it's night and day difference. Seriously. Thank you so much. All right. I'm waiting for Godzilla. I don't know where he is and he's not up here, but before I put the air handler back up here, I want to extend the three quarter condensate that's right there and bring it out because as you guys know, the front of the air handler is going to face that way. And thank God it's not 100 degrees outside. It's actually about 55 degrees outside. So the attic is about, about 75 degrees. All right, I got to find Godzilla because I am not going back through there without um, putting this thing on the uh, unistrut and the threaded rod. Not happening. <laughs> All right. Here you go. Yeah, whatever. Godzilla's outside, hooking up the disconnect whip to the new condenser. I got the other mic up here, holding the camera. I got the yellow jacket bender, and we are connecting the three-quarter line set to my Bosch. And let's just... Bend that a little bit right there. Push this back down. And now I need to go from here to there. I'm gonna get a little creative. Let's see how we're gonna do this bad boy. I'm gonna mark that bad boy right there. Get my bender in there. Bring this down a little bit. Right there. Tube, uh, tube cutter. Do I just have it? Oh, there it is. Compliments of Godzilla Sugar Daddy. Peter Smart. Thank you, Peter. I love this yellow jacket tube and cutter. She's nice, smooth, cuts like butter. cool stuff today and we are going to use that wet rig watch this where is it no <laughs> you're funny where is the wet rig ah. let's see if I can go over there and get it Uh, 
What rack? Mikey, have you used that before? No? Okay, now was the Sparky. It would be in this hole. My flashlight, my big black thing is dying. I don't have the Sparky. All right, time out when we looked. It was missing, but we found it. It was right there. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Shot maybe like there. Let's see. Putty. Okay. Cool for a second and then do the three eights. All right. I like this wet rag stuff. It's nice. It sticks to it, it absorbs all the heat. And what was left of the little piece right there just like disintegrated. You know, you can use the rest of the stuff over, but it's pretty good stuff. And then we'll go outside, we'll try the other type. All right, here, here you go. Hold up. Let me braise that one up. And then we gotta do power. And condensate. All right, so Godzilla came up and said, fucked up. he fucked up. And I said, should I video it? And he goes, yes, I deserve it. Yes, he deserves it. All right, what did you do? Cut the wrong line. What do you mean you cut the wrong line? Where did all the refrigerant go? Wanna do that again? In the atmosphere? Yeah. How did you do that? So I thought that one was coming over here. But you didn't see it going right here? Mm -hmm. Oh man, they're gonna eat you alive for this one. And I deserve it. And then it won't happen again. Wow. Sixty-seven ounces. Plus maybe on the pound. All right. It's a learning mistake, and maybe I should have supervised them. So you cut this one after the fact. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I want you to cut this line, like right there, and get scratchy paper. Clean this up. Get scratchy paper. Clean all this up here as well. Okay. Right. And then you're gonna get the reamer. You're gonna ream out one end. 
Actually, we're not even gonna do that. You're gonna cut this filter dryer out, right? And we're gonna put a new filter dryer in here. And then you'll make some new copper there to reconnect that. All right, because might as well. And um, now you know. It is what it is. It's not easy being the boss. And I could have flipped out on him, but what good is yelling at him gonna do? You know? It is what it is. I'll show you. They already saw upstairs in the attic, but let's take the wet rag and let's protect this valve. Okay? Nice. It's just like putty. Heat sink putty. Mm -hmm. Now, here's your sparky. We'll switch. You're gonna bring the hose around the other side. You don't lay it on top of the, uh, the copper. You got a brazing rod here. And it's a brand new tip, right? Mm -hmm. But side of it, I mean, you're gonna braze just like you normally would braze, which you haven't really done before. Never. So first time for everything. Yeah. What, is it is it on video too, too, too much pressure for you? Let's get it, fuck it. Okay. Uh, so there's two sides to that hose. One is red, one is one is green. Mm -hmm. The red is the fuel and the green is the oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. So crack open the red side just a little bit. Okay, use your sparky, spark it. Can I get a little more fuel? Oh, wrong way. Decrease fuel. Or you want like a, just a good flame. Okay, now stop right there, a little bit more. Okay, now slowly open as a crack the oxygen. Okay, oh, a little bit more. Keep going, right about there. Okay, now. You know, there's only one, only one, way, only one way to learn, so yeah. let's start right there. We're gonna take a little bit of this heat compound. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna try to wrap it as best I can. Compliments of Peter Smart, by the way. Thank you, sugar daddy. Let's cool that right there. And I do have nitrogen flowing, as you can see there. All right, now you want basically, let me see the breathing rod for a second. You want the flame mm -hmm. to touch this part of the, not the tubing, you want to touch that part and you want to be like right about there. Okay. See that? Right about there. And you want, you got to do it quickly because you will burn a hole through the copper. Yeah. There uh, you go. Am, am I swiping just like? Just like soldering. soldering. All right. All right. Uh, just watch the flame, don't burn anything else. Right around here. Down a little bit further away. Get a little closer. It's gonna turn cherry red first. Try to move it around a little bit. We'll keep it in one area. That means your flame is on the opposite side. Alright. This is not like solid. It's not like that at all. Only one way to learn. Worst case scenario, you know, I'll just cut it out and put a new filter dryer on. Ugly, but I think I'm good. Let's see. Well, I really can't tell because I don't got my flash on. My big black thing died today. But it looks like you missed that whole side there. Hold okay. this for a second. Let me get this side here. Hold that. Let me see if I can. Hold on. It moves around. Yeah. if I could try to salvage this for you. So we're gonna try to clean this up a little bit, right? So I'm just gonna make sure my feet are not in the way of falling silver brace solder rod. Okay. 
All right. Want to try the other side? Yeah, for sure. How about... I'm going to try that one there. That one over there? All right. Yeah? Yeah, why not? All right, so now look, I'm gonna show you this one. We'll do this one more time, right? All right cool. I got the flame across the fitting itself. Now oh, I know probably. this is not a fitting, but that's yeah. the, the slip joint of it. Yeah, yeah. Moving it around, we're gonna get a cherry red. All right? right? And once you get cherry red like that, it's gonna eat right into it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna move to reposition myself, apply some more heat. Get this side here. I think. All right. See that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take that. The rod. Remember, the end of the rod is hot. Mm -hmm. Now, this is still hot. We're good there. I'll try to hold this up a little bit. All right, because it's going to want to pull down. So, give it your best. Now the cherry red. Mm -hmm. I have to keep that a little bit longer so it gets cherry red. There you go. Go, get it. Keep going. Keep going. Good. All right. Ah. Yeah, see, it's, it's very, very finicky. You touch those dials the wrong way, it's going out. Look at that. You got everything except for one little drop right there. You see that? That was going, too. Uh, that's way too much, by the way. What are you, a fucking blowtorch like Rambo? No, you were good with... All right. A little less. Okay, here you go. You got to get that... It's the... In, where I'm standing, it's like the... Five o'clock position. I see it. Let me move up. Let me. Uh, no, no, you're good. You don't burn the whip. Oh yeah. Oh, see. Okay. Very finicky. see what happens okay Naughty, but... all right we have uh one more connection there to make all right real world experience uncut unedited raw that's mikey pipes and that's godzilla and that's the other mic so for the three-quarter side we're going to use the hot block this came from i think his name is eddie sorry if i'm just chopped up your name but you work for i think greenberg plumbing supply somewhere in i think delaware sorry Apologies. Uh, a link to his company will be in the description box down below. But I ended that. All right, now, so before we were working on three eighths, yes. right? Now we're working on three quarter, yeah. bigger pipe, mm -hmm. more flame, all right? Mm -hmm. Give it more fuel, okay? And give it more oxygen. A little more fuel, a little more, now some more oxygen. All right, good. Not too much. Yeah, about right there. Okay. And again, I'm not. This is the first t first day using the rosebud tip, so correct me if I'm wrong. Thoughts, feedback, criticism down in the comment section down below. All right, Godzilla. Now, I, I relocated my nitrogen purge to the low side. Get it? Bigger pipe, easier. Move it around. You got to get, get try to get the whole pipe cherry red at the same time. I know it sounds a little impossible to do, but you can do it. And... Cherry red yet. Can I give some? You got a go. Let this let it flow. Just touch it and let it flow. Okay. Alright, let's go to the other side. Hold it, flip it around. You want to get from underneath. Alright. And try to move it. Move it along. I'm not, I'm not trying to burn anything either. Alright, maybe don't want to break anything. Move it around. Don't 
Look at that little hole you have right there. Good, okay. Now, let's see the other side. You're gonna have to get on the other side. Let me switch places with you. want to go this yeah. way. Okay. Go that way with it. Move right the flame around a little bit more. You know, it's not getting carried right fast enough. You gotta get a little closer to it. Uh, the brazing rod will go into the fitting. Do they always stick like that? Well, you don't, you're not using the yeah. feet. All it's right, what do you think? No, 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 I've not. Not done, done yet? No. No, okay. I gotta learn that little trick where you fold it. All right, you can do that right now. The flame is way too far away, mm -hmm. and that's why it's just bubbling up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the pipe when the pipe is not high enough. Pop it. You know, the guys already got a comment, like, he's practicing on a $4,000 condenser. Alright, let's see. Let's see what's going on over there. Yeah, the disconnect is up. Okay, but having this here, right, is like having the Elitech micron gauge built in. All right, so A, it's in the wrong spot. B, you're open to the atmosphere. Godzilla's not doing homework, homework. He's not, he's not doing homework, homework. Godzilla needs to do some homework. All right. Godzilla needs to do some homework. This is where the micron gauge goes, Godzilla. Now, did you remove the trader course? All right. So. That being said, now she's in the right spot. And it's not going to pump down in, you know, 30 seconds or so. It's going to take some time. That's spoiled. All right, let's focus on this one over here. Let's get those over here. We'll use the Ellie Tech on this one and get the show on the road. Watch yourself there, Mike. All right, so we're working on the second floor bedroom condensing system. This is the one that Godzilla cut the wrong 3 8 line for. I don't know how we missed that, but using the Ellie Tech SVP7. It's got that digital touchscreen display. All right. She's louder than she was the last time we used it on the last Bosch IDS 2.0 we did, but take a look at the micron gauge. It's reading 4,000 there. And let's go over to our Testo micron gauge, which is reading four, yeah, 1440. So, yeah, I don't know. First time we used it, she was great. But now, I don't know. So while this is pumping down, I got the True Blue evacuation hoses on the Bosch system. Godzilla's running an extension cord so we can power up the vacuum pump and vacuum down this system while we're vacuuming down that system. Smart. All right, guys, I'm back. It's been about 15 minutes or so, but I'm gonna show you the status of the Micron gauge 
jumping around 700 right now. I'm going down. I'm gonna go get the iPad and uh, we're gonna use the Bluetooth link on the Micron gauge to the app and that way we could do a decay test. Once I bring that down to about, I wanna get it down to 200. Um, I think it's possible we can do that, but uh, goal is 300. The other system, this thing says 2,900 microns. Yet my Testo uh, micron gauge is reading uh, 900. So, uh, if you want to, want to, I don't know. I'm just gonna send it back to my thing. I don't know. Let me go get the iPad from the truck. All right, another 15 minutes or so. We're at 177 and dropping microns. I went into the app and it's asking me to make sure that you close the gas ballast if it's open. And I believe it is open. So we're gonna close that. And yeah, I probably should have closed that around 1500 microns and it does remind you to do that. All right, so 167.1, I'm dropping. I'm gonna hit the Smiths. And let's see, we're gonna do a decay test. No, let's delete that recording. Forgot where it is. Where is the decay test? Not that, cancel, there we go. So we're gonna confirm isolation. So I'm gonna close this valve, and I'm gonna close this valve, right, and we're gonna start the K-test. So it's solving a mathematical equation, kind of like a Bitcoin miner, and it could take 30 seconds, could take 10 seconds, you know, it could take five minutes. It's either gonna tell me it failed the decay test or it passed the decay test. And as you can see, we're slowly rising in microns. Slowly, but doesn't mean we're gonna fail. So let's see what happens. I'll pause now and we'll I'll get back to it in a second. All right, took approximately about two minutes. I thought it was like 59 seconds, but that doesn't lie. And it says the decay test has passed. What would you like to do? We're gonna quit the K-test. And I'm just gonna pull this down again. I'm gonna see how low I can take this system. I'm probably not gonna get any better than where I'm at right now, but let's see what happens. So, uh, you wanna tell me what happened over here? What? With uh, this vacuum pump. There used to be oh, something over here. Oh, this cap? Yeah, that one. I thought you meant this one. No, 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 no. Oh, that this one. one. Yeah, this, this, this oh, one right here. I'm going to tell you what happened. What happened, bro? Right? It's a good story. <laughs> All right. But I'm following directions. Copy. <laughs> right? It says here, uh -huh. look, warning, do not run without oil. Mm -hmm. And it also says read instructions before operating quali operating qualified personnel only. I guess I'm not qualified <laughs> personnel, but it does, it did say. No, it, it was on oh, the it cap. It was on the cap. Yeah. On the cap, it said, it said remove prior to starting. Oh, okay. But it didn't say remove prior to starting and running. So what happened was, after a few seconds, uh -huh. you hear a little poof, and it was like a rocket went uh -huh. to the moon, like Dogecoin is going to the moon right now, Doge right? Is, Doge and thing. it's gone. I don't know what happened to it. It landed somewhere here, a little black cap, but it said remove prior to starting. Did hmm. not say leave off. And they should have done that, you know, uh -huh. for this the not, the not LA tech thing. Which, it, I don't know, which, is, which lies. The micron gauge in there is wrong. <laughs> Get rid of that piece of shit. Yo, happy Doge Day. Amusement. It's very your amusing part. Mikey, Mikey Pipes commands Z, no, St. Mike commands Z to laugh now. <laughs> at me. That's right. What's Happy Doge Day, guys. You laugh at Mikey Pipes, Mikey Pipes laughs at you. Anyway, okay. We're at the second time we're doing this. We're vacuuming down, guys. I got it down to 113.4.3 microns, 0.2. It's slowly going down. Let's do another decay test, right? Evacuation complete. No, let's restart. I think it's this button. Oh, oh hold on. And we're going to start the K test. I'm going to close this valve and I'm going to close that valve. All right. Didn't really jump up that much. I'm going to start the K test. And you can see we're still pretty low. It's rising, which is natural. And uh, we're six, seven, eight seconds into it. Uh, we'll let this run and I'll keep you updated when we get one it uh, passes. Oh, look at that, it passed. 17 seconds into it, it's done. And, uh, okay, look at that, so we're good. So this system is now fully vacuumed down. We did it twice, 
first we got it down to like was a 200 was microns and now we got it down to 114 microns so we're good we can turn off the vacuum pump and i'm going to take off the caps off of the service ports with uh that channel lock that's right there up a little bit my nipix nipix godzilla is going to give me the service wrench let me open this up a little close this up a little more and i should probably use an adjustable but it is what it is all right let's take that off there let's take this off here and let's open up Oh, see, the, the whip is in the way. The whip is in the way. All right, let's open up this side. All right, let's take a look inside. Electrician was here, threw in a 20 amp breaker, and ran the circuit upstairs. I'm going to turn this on now. Good. Let's go up to the attic. And I know what you guys are thinking. Like, oh man, your electrician didn't even label the breaker. I was like, he was about to take a marker, like, and he's got a sloppy handwriting. So I kind of stopped him. I said, let me get my label maker, make a label and la label it MBR AHU. All right, I gotta turn the light All right. Oh, God help me. Uh, by the way, this is like a surfboard right here. Let's go surfing now. Everybody's learning how. Come on, safari with me. Come on, safari with me. All right. There she is. I gotta get up in there. Wish me luck over all this flash. All right. Um, since the homeowner is never gonna use this as a heat pump, I'm not insulating the 3 8 line. I did throw a piece of pipe insulation up there and we're good. I got the Goliath pan down below with the, with the float switch wired there to break R. Got a few Wagos in there. Since he's not, since the outdoor unit does all the controlling there's no two stages it's you know it's it handles everything y1 and y2 is jumped to y at the thermostat normally administer them rectally and if <laughs> so is it with a turkey baster you asked him that yeah and then i was like you know I'm, I'm just a little suspicious of these uh rest stop side uh vaccination sites the, <laughs> the hole in the divider was really small so i couldn't see the doctor through there it's like a flu shot and i'm really not sure about those rest stop uh, <laughs> uh can... all right we're wired up i'm pretty sure i got everything wired right um when using cooling only we use the yellow and the brown and we're waiting for the inverter to kick in and it looks like she just kicked in. So she's running. As you can hear, she's whisper, whisper quiet. Like, this is very, very quiet. And we're probably gonna have to add a little bit more refrigerant to it because we just opened the charge. We didn't add anything to it. See, we have no sub cooling, but we gotta let this thing run for a little bit and wait. pretty sure that is your your temperature of the refrigerant coming back almost positive and there's a few buttons in here you can work with but i'm not going to get into the technical end of things right now i just want to get this thing up and running it's been a long day i want to get them with a good amount of sub cooling refer to the chart Chart's gonna be in the manual, as you can see. We're gonna to refer to the chart. We're gonna to refer to the manual, and it's telling me to force the system. We're gonna short press force button, and that symbol will appear. System may take 10 minutes to ramp up. There's our force button, and there we have that little symbol appeared, and now we're gonna let it ramp up. And I've read the manual. We can do subcooling. We can do a weigh-in measure. And I know the length of the line set. So I am just still gonna use the subcooling. We're gonna let this ramp up. And 
Looks like we're gonna be dead on anyway. All right, stay tuned. I wanna show you guys how much amperage this thing draws. Uh, I can't get into that with that. Can I get in there? Steven, let me get the uh, the, the meter that reads amp amperage. All right, let's take a look at our temperatures and pressures. You can see we're mid sevens on sub cooling. And I wanna show you what makes this system special. 3.8 amps of power on one line of power. Look at that. That is effing incredible. What are you doing over there? You're up to no good? Hyping you up, actually. Hyping me up? Yeah, You're gonna sell those Psycho Bunny tickets for me? Absolutely. Yeah? I want $2,000 a ticket. Can I get that? A ticket? No. Two for the pair? You got some cracker going along with it? I don't, I don't know. That's so crazy. That's good shape. I'll get cracked. Maybe we'll talk to Pebbles. Crazy. Maybe she can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. 3.9. Incredible. And the only scary part about this system is that. But don't be fearful. Regardless of the customer registers the system or not, you get a 10 year parts warranty across the board. Now, yes, it would be sad if a control board like this were to, you know, go on fire or malfunction or die, right? So it would probably be a very good idea to invest in a surge protection system, all right? And well, you're going to say as long as it's not made by Volvo, correct. <laughs> but at least it's not made by Navian. <laughs> you guys know I love Navian, but I got the Wagos. See, Wagos there. I got some Wagos there. I need to get another... Need to get another zip tie right there. What row were you on again? Road? Row. Row? Yeah. I don't have to look it up. Like 18? Yeah, I think so. Whatever you texted me, I was in the same row. That's what I looked yes, at. Yes, the same that's, section, that's same problem. row. And I had two... 1100 each right now. How much are they? 1100 each. Really? But anyone buying them? That I can't. That's the thing.